Recorded live with little or no editing. It's Defense Up. I'm Run7. How you doing? Today we're going over a sword named Kindness. His defense, he sent this in, in to me a while ago. By the way, I did get the links in these videos. Uh, not like not like uh, the other day when, when I didn't get those. So uh, I've already got a flood of people starting to uh, contact me to get their defense reviewed. So be sure to get on that list by looking in the description and contacting me in Discord. But today is Kindness's turn. He sent me these picks and um, I, I went through them briefly and they're pretty good. I gotta say they're they're pretty good. I'm I'm uh, thinking this is gonna be one of our higher scoring runs on this. Previously, I talked about the red stars on Omega Red mostly because I wanted to brag about my six, but also because there's word of Omega Red not functioning correctly in War because he gets ability blocked by Misty Knight in that Heroes for Hire matchup. There is hope. You can either build your Sabertooth bigger so that he has the highest health, or if you don't want to do that, you can put Skirmisher on your Omega Red and then turn one ability block Misty Knight, and that really helps out. Reminex talks, talks all about this. I will put a link in the description to his video where he explains all the mechanics of that. So thank you, Reminex, for figuring that out for us. I was pretty worried when I pulled six red stars and found out that might be a bad thing. It's not going to be a bad thing. It's going to be a good thing. I think I'm just going to have to put level five Skirmisher ISO on my Omega Red. Team number one, we grade on five different things. It's who you're using, their placement, their power levels, uh, their ISOs, and what kind of mood I'm in. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. Okay, team number one is an aim team. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. I like, uh, I like her being to the outside. Yeah, I think we should take her and put her on the outside and go ahead and put your, is this, uh, this is uh, aim security. Aim security should probably be adjacent to her because aim security does healing on on her turn she has adjacent healing and you really want to keep scientist supreme alive now of course uh this is your least powerful team i think and your lineup gets pretty big toward the end so this team probably isn't holding against anybody but you know that's what we do here in defense up we split hairs i like healer Fortifier is okay, um, especially at this low power level. It's probably kind of useful, but I'm not a big fan of Fortifier for most tunes. I think you should go Healer on security. Also, uh, Skirmisher is fine. Skirmisher is fine, and Striker is good over here. You might think about doing, like, um, you could do maybe a Striker on this guy. He's kind of the damage dealer. Also, I kind of like Scientist in this spot rather than Monstrosity. Um... <clears throat> It's a filler team. Don't waste too much time. You are so close, though. You should make them war ready. Um, I honestly do think it's worth changing this to a healer. With that healer built into securities kit, it, it does some things. And you're going to get more value out of it long term. If the team ever gets reworked or something, I don't know, maybe. Or maybe just tack one more on there so it's war ready. Uh, as is, this is a... This is like a B minus. Make him more ready. Change the placement over there. I really think you should swap out this character. But if your sci if your aim scientist isn't built up, then don't worry about it. It's it's not it's not worth changing. <clears throat> All right, team number two, OG Sinister Six, uh, Striker. Mm, that's a terrible pick for Green Goblin. It's too late to change it. It's not worth changing it. But if you're somebody else and you're building this team up from scratch, I think you either want to go Skirmisher or Raider on Green Goblin. Skirmisher because he puts defense down on people each turn, and so you want to make sure that that sticks. And then Raider because he does a lot of AoE stuff. Uh, Raider, Skirmisher, or Striker. He has a pretty good basic uh, counter assist, so Striker's good there, but Skirmisher's fine. Uh, Striker or Raider here, Striker or Raider here. Actually, I think Raider or Skirmisher here on Shocker is probably good. And then get Rhino out of here, put Vulture in. Um, you want to save Rhino for offense. He has his little anti blind thing, is great when you have a mags on the field and you need to deal with it. So keep him off of this just so that you can use him on offense. Otherwise, healer is okay. I like him better as a raider. You're not going to get much use out of him anywhere. It's just that cleanse that you want him for. This is pretty close. Again, it's another filler team. You've got it at a high enough. Uh, points of a very efficient way of taking out the og sinister six is with an aim team a 300 aim team will easily take out this 400 og sinister six of course just about anything at 300 will take out this og sinister six so we just put them in here to fill the spot the, the spot 
Um, as for my grade on this, I'm going to give you a B plus because at least you've got them almost all war ready. And aside from this ISO, they're all acceptable. I really don't like Striker on him. He doesn't do a lot of damage. He's kind of slow and he doesn't have a good counter assist. You should change that one up, but not on this team because, you know, it's a filler. So moving on team number three, wave one Avengers with Falcon instead of Black Widow. Black Widow is being used on Skilletary on offense. Um... Falcon's fine if you're not using your, your power armor. Uh, that's fine. Power armor's not really that great. We saw some videos on T-Dub's channel. Um, he was showing off a video of somebody who had like a 750k power armor. And it kind of messes stuff up. But it kind of hurts to invest that much into power armor. So I can't really recommend it. I have a 350 power armor and it works great at cleaning up some lower level Red Skull Hydra teams. Um... But if you're not going to do that, this is a great place to put him in. He has the Avenger tag, I do believe. I don't, it's not Wave 1 Avenger. I think it's just a standard Avenger tag. But the biggest thing that he's doing is some general damage, which he does okay at. Uh, he's critting because you've got him as a raider. I like that. And then that, that turn meter speed up on turn two. And he should make it because these guys are going to taunt. Um, honestly, I, I think this is great. I think this is a fantastic build. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. They're war ready. You haven't overinvested in anything. Your biggest uh, character is Hulk. Uh, then you've got Hawkeye and then um, Captain America. That's fine. I think when you get these characters start out, this and this team will be up over 400 and you'll be doing great. Uh, it's an A for the team. I think you're doing just fine. Team number four, Mercs. Now, this is an interesting build. We're seeing Black Bolt again. We saw Black Bolt uh, in yesterday's video, I believe. And... I like Black Bolt when you have both Riot Guard and Merc Lieutenant, and I think you should be swapping out Shuri and putting in Merc Lieutenant on this team. You're going for the synergy with Shuri and Killmonger. Um, I like Black or I like Bullseye better than L Lieutenant, but I, I like Bullseye because Lieutenant and Riot Guard are in here. They have two moves that they're not attacking, and that's when uh, Bullseye comes out and he does his attacks. And that's why Bullseye is valuable on this team and absolutely nowhere else other than, you know, the payday event. But <clears throat> don't build Bullseye for the payday event. Um, yeah, I, I think this is really good. I think it's an A-. minus. I would like to see, if, if you're going to run Shuri and not um, Merc Lieutenant, I would like to see Korath in here. You're going to get more value out of Korath than you will Bullseye if you don't have Merc Lieutenant on the field. Otherwise... I mean, I don't know. I, it's sure he's just your least developed character on the team, and I think you should change her out for Lieutenant. And then make sure Lieutenant is in the middle someplace, not on the outside. Uh, yeah, otherwise, it's pretty good. I, I, think it's, I think it's an A- minus team. It's okay. You haven't really wasted anything. Because even if you take Shuri off of this team, you're using her elsewhere. We're seeing her rebounding uh, yet again. It's like the fourth time she's rebounded in popularity. She's being used in Doom 2. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't really see any changes. You've got skirmisher strikers on all your mercs and healer on your healer, so that that's that's good. It's an A minus. I just think that there's better people to be using. Team number five. This is a kind of a tech guardian kind of thing. Now, normally, I would say that Star Lord and Rocket should be strikers with your Groot as a skirmisher, but because you're using Ghost and Ultron as strikers, I kind of like that you've got them switched to Raider and skirmisher. I think that's going to put plenty of vulnerables on the field for the other two to be hitting. Uh, Ultron has a revive. Ghost is very dodgy, so they tend to stay alive. It wouldn't be such a bad thing to maybe bring up Groot and Rocket a little bit if you're serious about this team, but I don't think you should. I think this team's old news. Um, I think you should just leave it as it is. Uh, I kind of like the placement on this particular build with Groot to the outside um, and, then, and then Ghost next to him keeping him from dodging. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Because um, you're trying to protect Ultron is really what you're trying to do. And, you know, Star-Lord's going to do that with some blinds. Rocket's going to do his AoE stuff and put some vulnerables out there. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's not too bad. I think if I were going into this team, I would just, like, really quickly kill Rocket. 
and then I'd start working on, on, on Ultron. If you can kill Rocket before he can make Groot taunt, then Groot's no longer a tank anymore, and he's not really an issue. He's just cleansing. So that's kind of how I would attack into it. It's not a tough team to beat. It's nothing special, but it's also nothing wasted. It's something kind of kind of different. Somebody's going to have to think about it for a minute. So I, yeah, I'm going to give you an A for this. I don't think there's anything you should change. I think you should leave it just as it is. Team number six, Astonishing Axemen. Yeah, I see a real big problem with this team. Real big problem with this team. Can anybody else tell me what the problem is, chat? Do you know what the problem is with this team? This team is on defense. That's the problem. You need to put this team on offense. This team just crushes stuff. I like this team. I like uh, symbiotes both on offense. I don't like seeing them on defense. Um, as for your build, you're doing the bishop as a striker and everybody else is a skirmisher. That's great for raids. Feel free to take this team up to like 700k. Put some a little bit of blue ISO on them. Um, yeah, it's a great team for for raids. You've got them uh, tricked out for raids. Maybe you're just not rehearsed at attacking with them on offense. Um, basically, you just look to see who's got the counter assist above their head and then choose your target accordingly. If it's Jubilee, then you want to put blind on somebody because she's going to be assisting and, and laying out blind. And um, if it's somebody else, it's, you know, do as you choose. You're not doing anything wrong with this for a defensive team. So I'll, I'll give you an A minus just for the fact that I'd like to see you replace it with something else and use them on offense because you're going to get so many kills. Um, as for placement, an alternative placement is to put Bishop in the middle and Beast to the outside. And then you have these two that are kind of sacrificial. Um, he revives, she dodges a lot. Whoops, I just reduced that. And um, that allows a little bit more turn meter to be applied to Beast because they're going to be dropping low in health and then getting healed back up. <clears throat> But I, I like it off to the side like this myself. I would maybe, if you're going to go with Bishop off to the side, I think you should swap Kitty and Beast. Uh, keep it that much, keep Beast that much further away from Bishop. Because when you're attacking into this team, your primary target is to try and either kill Beast or kill Jubilee. If you get either one of them, this team folds and you can roll over the rest of them. Usually you end up having to go through Bishop though, but you've got a pretty substantial uh, Bishop there. So like I said, A minus, put them on offense though. Team number seven, Black Order. I run Black Order on offense. It's okay to put them on defense if you don't want them there. Uh, you have a really good build here. Uh, skirmisher, Skirmisher, Striker, Raider, and Striker on Cull Obsidian. That's fine. This team is very forgiving with the ISOs. I think these three are the only ones you really want to really want to pick and choose. You can reverse these. I like to reverse them for offense and make her the Striker and him the Skirmisher because I use her basic a lot more. I use them to clear those positive effects and having the Skirmisher on him gives them the triple tap and they can just clear a lot of positive effects. Skirmisher is pretty much the only pick you wanna have on Ebony Ma, so yeah. As a legendary character, um, we'll see if you wanna take him up to the blue ISO for DD5, but that's kind of a mystery right now. I'm recommending everybody collect teal gear just don't apply it <clears throat> um call obsidian as a striker i prefer him i think i do i have him as a striker i might have him as a raider or something i don't know just don't use fortifier on call obsidian he's never like you nobody ever get he's almost always the last guy standing um and then raider like thanos can be anything Thanos can be anything, so Raider's fine. I like this. I think it's an A. I would prefer it on offense, but it is kind of losing its viability on offense. And, you know, like at this power level, it's like the teams that you're beating are usually smaller anyway, and it feels like such a waste. So um, other than like um, a two-piece hero for hire cleanup job, you know, when there's like two people left, you could bring this in and clean them up. Otherwise, it's kind of useless on offense. So I, I don't mind so much that it's on defense these days. It creates, you know, other people have to come in there with their black order to beat it or, or, or something else. And so, yeah, it's fine. I like it. Team number eight, Doomhood. Perfect. Um, you could go level five Skirmisher on Toad. If you want to take him to level five, go level five Skirmisher. If you're not going to go level five, then Raider's the way to go. Um, I like having him a level five skirmisher so he clears those positive effects on his opening move. It really helps. Um, but otherwise, Raider's the way to go for more vulnerables on the field. You got him as a skirmisher. That's good. He retaliates. For those who don't know, he retaliates just like Bishop does. So you make him a skirmisher so he's putting the vulnerables on the field. 
Um, however, Bishop, we're running as a striker for the damage, but originally when the team was smaller, we used to run Bishop as a skirmisher for the same reason you want to make Blob a skirmisher. Uh, I like everything else that you're doing here. You got a war ready. You're not wasting anything. It's a decent sized Brotherhood team. This guy is lopsiding your power, so these guys are going to have a tough time protecting him. I don't know if they're going to hold out long enough. You may want to go ahead and put the gear on and bring them up. They still have good viability on offense, too. If you want to switch, you know, do, put Doom someplace else and run them on offense, it's not going to be a waste of resources to bring the team up a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I can't really advise you to do that. I think it's good enough. I'm going to give you an A for that team. I think it works. Team number nine is a Emma Rotter hybrid with Doc Ock and Minerva. <clears throat> Biggest problem here is your strife is too small. People are going to go through him like a hot knife through butter. And he's really what keeps this team from being targeted with ability block and picked apart by control teams. So you definitely want to bring Strife up to, I, I like Strife in between Sinister and Emma. So I think bringing him up to 125 is probably the place to put him. That'll be big enough. You've got Deflex from Doc Ock going here and here. That's good. And, um, and then you've got Minerva in here reviving Strife, which is very helpful because he is going to be dying. Let's get some music going in here. Um, he's he's going to be dying, so she's reviving. So that you've got that saving grace over him, and you put him as a fortifier level 5 to stop some of that incoming damage. So it, it looks like you understand that he's a weak target, and you're doing what you can um, with your ISOs to cover for that, with your people to cover for that, but there's no substitute for just having a badass drive. Plus, um, he's great in DD4. I mean, you've obviously, obviously not worrying about DD4 anymore because you got Doom, but for those of you who are looking at DD4, he's cheap and he has great synergy with Sinister. And I brought him in thinking it was gonna be a total waste, like a, a waste on a cheap character. I really am glad I did it. I found a lot of value stripping those taunts from the enemy, um, uh, taking some of those positive effects, putting them on Sinister and Sinister spreading to the rest of the team. I thought it was great. So he's a good choice. Um, I'm gonna bring him up. I don't think it's a waste at all. I don't know about DD5. I don't know if it's gonna be the same in DD5, but whatever. All right, let's take a look at the last team. No surprise here, heroes for hire in the last slot, just like everybody does. And you get a perfect score for this team. Uh, everything's just right, you got the placement. I'm hearing some people in the comments balk about not putting Colleen Wing next to um, Luke Cage. Uh, getting, you know, there's different people that counterattack, and you wanna get them I'm some people are saying put Luke Cage in the center with Misty Knight and Colleen Wing adjacent to him for as many counterattacks as you sh you could possibly get. I'm gonna say that it's it's kind of like um it's kind of like ISOs on Thanos. Who cares? Do whatever seems to make you happiest. I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal, especially now that on Monday we're gonna have Omega Red come out and people are learning how to attack into this team. Uh, there might be. <clears throat> So we're, we're looking into uh, the, the matchup with Misty Knight into Omega Red. And like I said in the beginning, if you make Omega Red a skirmisher and land the ability block on Misty Knight, then she can't ability block him for his turn two ultimate move, which really messes this team up. So I will be thinking about what other players are going to be thinking about, which is what can I do with Misty Knight to make that not happen? Where should Misty Knight be? Because she's going to be the opening target for Omega Red. Is there a way to boost her resistance or something like that? Uh, and if there, if there does turn out to be a solution that makes it that much tougher for Weapon X, I'm going to be on it and I will let you guys know. But for right now, it looks like um, either build Sabretooth with more health than Omega Red or put Skirmisher level 5 on Omega Red and Ability Block Misty and turn 1 is how you're going to beat this team. But as for a sword named Kindness, he gets an A. I think this is one of the highest scoring defense up videos we've had. He knows what he's doing. He's uh, building it right. Um... I don't know, maybe put some blue ISOs on this team is about all I could tell you to do to make it better. But even then, I I don't know. You've got this team big enough that you could possibly be bringing these, some of these characters into Dark Dimension 5. And we'll see when the Krakens get into DD5 and start cutting it up. We'll see if these guys are, are viable choices. You're kind of on the fence right here. So I would just put you in a holding pattern before you go investing any more. All right. 
This has been Defense Up of A Sword Named Kindness. If you like what you saw, links links in the description. Hit like, subscribe, help me with the algorithm, all that good stuff. And uh, remember, guys, don't just have a good game. Be good to yourselves and each other, too. Bye.